G'day out there, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode three of series three um, of Reality Check on how you're going with Jason Owen. And um, as you know, the past couple of weeks, uh, we've spoken to NASA Sultan from Married at First Sight. We've spoken to Sally Bloomfield from Real Housewives of Melbourne. And this series is about talking to people from past reality shows or current reality shows or someone that might be on a some type of show now and just chatting to them about how their work's going and how life's treating them through COVID and experiences through whatever show they've been through or they are currently on or whatever it might be. And also, you know, shining a light on mental health through difficult times um, and pressure and, and everything across the board, as we all know, which is why this show started. And tonight I'm chatting to Sarah Todd, who many may have got to know through MasterChef. Um, she also is a current host on the Channel 10 show Farm to Fork. She's an incredible chef, she's an incredible girl, and it was great to chat to Sarah and um, and also just get her insights on everything that she does now. You know, she owns her own restaurant, she's, she's done some incredible things, and and um, let's cross now and have a chat to Sarah. We spoke a little while ago, um, and uh, it's just such an honour to be able to speak to people and, and uh, you know, get their thoughts on, on the times that have been thrown at us now, but also to hopefully shine a light and spread awareness about the importance of mental health and no matter what we're all going through at certain times. So let's go and have a chat to Sarah and hope you all enjoy it. And Sarah joins me now. How are you going, Sarah? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Thank you very much for coming on for a chat. It's it's great, it's amazing to have you on for a chat and um, yeah, thanks for coming on. It's, it's fantastic to have a chat to to different people all the time on the talk show about, you know, different experiences through shows and, and life. And um, people have seen you on television over the years, but everyone first got to know you back in 2014 on MasterChef. Um, and I heard that you, you said the experience was months of anxiety for you. Was it actually that tough? Yeah, you know, I am a person that when I take on any project, I put everything into it and I take every single thing that I do very seriously. And to add to that, I was away from my son and I don't know if you know how these things work usually, but uh, it is up to six months of filming. You're all living in one house. There's one phone call a week for 15 minutes and you don't see your family. So um, if you do have kids, they do allow you to do one trip every few weeks to visit them. But my son was still living in the UK. So I literally didn't see him for a couple of months straight or, you know, I, I can't even remember now, but it was tough. And I realized at that time that if I was gonna be putting my family and myself through this process, then I wanna make sure it's worth it. So I was studying extremely hard I wanted to make a success of it. I wanted to get into the food industry. So I wasn't going to let anything slip. And I, nothing from my side was going to get me eliminated. That was my goal. And so I really did take it very seriously. And I, I, because of that pressure, I did have a lot of anxiety. And it's a, it's a strange thing because I'd gone through my life with not really experiencing something like that. And uh, usually always being in control of my surroundings. But at this, um, you know, situation, it was very stressful for me. Oh, I can only imagine. I, I went through X Factor back in 2012. And but going on these type of reality shows is, is not easy. Um, it, and as you know, it's, it's a great career move. It's fantastic. You know, we get to be seen and heard by people and get to show our craft and things like that. But as you were just saying there a minute ago, um, you know, you, you live together, like contestants live together um, whilst these things are being filmed. And that's not easy either. How did you find that living, living with the other contestants? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not easy, but I guess I, I was lucky being, well, my career at that time was a model and I'd been traveling all over the world, living in model houses, in other people's spaces oh gosh, living all over the place. Um, and I think I'd gotten used to that uh, part of living with other people. So I actually quite enjoy it. I think you learn so much when you're living with people in a house and you see their little, uh, you know, routines that they do in the morning. It's quite interesting, to be honest. <laughs> oh, absolutely, 100%. How, how did you find, because obviously it's it's a competition, you know, like these these type of things are, you know, they're, they're a great launch pad for careers and so forth. But at the end of the day, they are a competition. 
did you find there was um, any like conflict like amongst other people because you know it is it is competitive yeah there is you do see that there is um some slight conflict but i was also quite lucky i think in these kind of situations if i could give anyone some advice is find your little support network find uh, a couple of people that you get along with and you know even communicate with them and say look we're in this together let's be a support you know and i think it was a beautiful thing that um you know what uh, brent and amelia did is when they were getting to the end they said that look we'll give each other a portion of that prize money because we've helped each other get to the end and it is that support system that you create in these environments and in life that will help you go the the long distance and i was really lucky to have kira and sam who we were really tight throughout the series and i think that definitely helps and I think, yeah, yes, you are competitive um, and you want to do well, but I think it's really important to be competitive on yourself and not on other people, you know, not trying to, um, you know, put other people down or compete against other people so that you win. You should win because you're the best. So be better, work harder, you know, and and get there because of your own merit. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. What, what do you reckon the best and the worst things that you cooked on the show were? Well, it was definitely my raw chicken that got me <laughs> laminated. <laughs> you can't really get any lower than that. <laughs> but uh, no, to be honest, there was, <laughs> there was this one dish. There was this one dish early um, in the season that I would say is my worst dish. And what it was, um, you know, there was this mystery box challenge. It was really early on. And you're not used to being in these environments where you're put under this kind of pressure where you have to think on the spot. I thought that you had a moment to go and check a recipe and come back, but you do not have a chance to do that. <laughs> so I made this dish and I was like, please don't pick me because it's horrible. Like it was just not, there was nothing going on that was, you know, any good. And it was a kind of lesson. And I think it's important for us when we, um, you know have any sort of failures it's to learn something from it and they're so important to have and i realized i needed to create some sort of structure or framework to help me throughout the competition and it was this really simple technique that with every dish it had to um have three elements of flavors you know sweet sour salty it had to balance in that sense it had to and that could come from you know soy sauce or it could come from um i don't know cheese that adds that saltiness like it doesn't matter what cuisine it is it needs to be balanced then texturally you have to work out to have something creamy that's going to kind of line your palate you need to have something to bite into that has that oomph you know like whether it's a steak or it's a firm tofu or whatever it is you've got to balance the the textures in a dish and then visually you know we eat with all senses the first thing that hits the plate is our eyes so people say oh why put so much effort into how a dish looks well we see the dish if it looks like crap then you know it is going to change your perception of what that dish is going to taste like so all of these things have to come together so i think when you have those moments where it is really you know a bit of a blunder i suppose i suppose and that you have to learn so it did teach me a lot um yeah and my best dish would probably be uh i think it was my scotch egg dish it was this moment in the competition where because, you know, I'm sure you realize through these competitions, you're constantly battling, am I good enough? Am I going to get through this round? Am I, you know, and you're, you're fighting yourself nearly, you know, the entire time. And there was this one day when I cooked this scotch egg and I took it up to the, to the judges and they said to me, um, they said to the room, actually, they say, said, who um, in this competition thinks that Sarah is the biggest threat? And I looked around and almost every single hand was in the room was up. And I was like, okay, wow, okay, I can cook, you know, this is a moment to realize that I can probably go to the end in this competition. And it was kind of that boost that I needed to feel worthy of that position, I suppose. Yeah, and that's the thing, like going back um, to what you were just saying a minute ago, there is so much involved in a, in a dish from seeing it, to biting into it, to tasting it, like and for like for someone like me who can't even cook bloody toast, <laughs> I, <laughs> I like your toast. I burn I it. To ask you, I need to ask you. How do you like your toast? Do you like it? Do you butter it when it's cold or hot? 
hot. That's if I butter it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, you're not really into cooking at all. No, <laughs> no, no. But the thing is, I'm hopeless, absolutely hopeless. I'm very lucky. My, my, my partner's amazing. But I, um, you don't realise, as a normal person, you, like you sit down to eat a meal and you're 100% right. Like you think, oh, why do you go to so much effort? Just cook the bloody meal and put it on a plate. But if, if something's brought out messy and disgusting, yeah. you won't eat it without even tasting it, will you? Seriously, honest, my son is a perfect example because he will just say no to something without even like, you know, understanding what it is. And there's so many things that go into it. It's even the way you describe a dish and yeah. you like the way you write the dish on a menu, you know, working um, with my, I've opened restaurants in India and the biggest learning curve was the way you write the dish name on a menu. And it's like, why this, there's this one dish on the menu, who, what, you know, I would say is the best dish on the menu, but no one's ordering it because it's probably not written right on the, on the menu to be enticing. So there's so much analysis that, um, analysis that goes into creating a menu from the way you write it on the menu to the way you describe it, to the way it smells, the way it's presented to, then finally the flavor is the last thing that happens so there's there's a lot that goes into it it's unbelievable it, it really is um you know like on master chef we we often see for example back at master chef again we often see um contestants you know um handshaking as they played up um it's obviously a really stressful cooking against the clock all the time which i can only imagine because you're just constantly you know timed does that kind of, um, does that take its toll on the contestants mentally? Do you think like having to be put under so much pressure like that, like the adrenaline and things like that? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think the whole process, I think, is uh, a lot more stressful than people realise. And that is even long after the show has ended. I really, you know, it is such a, um, a full-on experience that you see the knock-on effect in people's personalities for much, um, you know, a long time after the show's ended. So, yeah, I, the pressure of the show, the pressure of the producers, the pressure of it then going to the public to being judged. I think there's so many different layers of uh, pressure that goes into these mm -hmm. kinds of shows. And um, it's about learning tools to deal with that because it's not really the producer's responsibility, uh, or maybe it should be the producer's responsibility to um, give the contestants the tools to be able to cope with this. And I still even remember a time uh, after MasterChef and my profile kind of really shot uh, up, especially in India. And I, my anxiety levels went to the next level because I went from you know, cooking these dishes and my, you know, creating these menus and I would be in my restaurant and all these people would be coming in to take a photo of me. And I started to feel like I was some sort of zoo animal. And I was getting, you know, I was just like, I just want to cook food. I just want to make these dishes and I just want to, um, you know, create food. And, and, and I started to not even want to go into my own restaurant. We had a, we have a completely open kitchen and I um, remember speaking to a friend of mine who, you know, has been in the limelight at a high level for a long period of time. And he said to me that you just need to um, understand that, you know, these people don't know what's going on in your personal life and they just see one element of what is going on and, and they're very inspired by what you do. And you need to understand that you kind of do have a bit of a responsibility now. And, and, people are not going to not know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, you're still dealing with everyday life. You're still, um, you know, running a business, you're trying to create a craft and there's lots of layers to what you do. And, and it was kind of a bit of a light bulb moment when I realized there was this one, uh, there was this two young girls that came into my restaurant and they said to me that, um, you know, she came up and I was having a tough day this day. You know, personally, there was a lot going on. She tapped me on the shoulder and she was like, ma'am, we've driven six hours to come and see you and we're so inspired by what you do and, you know, blown away and like, you know, all of this. And she said, do you mind coming and meeting my friend? 
And I was like, of course, you know, like walk over and um, I go to meet this young girl. She must've been 16, 17 years old. And she was bawling her eyes out. She was so excited to meet me. And it was kind of like this, you know, huge light bulb moment where I was like, this is not really even about me anymore. You know, I'm inspiring a younger generation or people to step outside their comfort zone and to, you know, follow their dreams and to uh, do great things. And there is this transitional period when you go into a, you know, one of these kind of uh, shows where you do hit a high level of um, familiarity quickly. So that it's really hard to cope with that because we don't, we, it's not been a gradual you know, growth, it's been really instant. And, and I do think that a lot of people will find it difficult to deal with that. And, and, you know, and I don't, it's really hard to build the tools to actually manage what's going on. And yeah, it, it took me a long time. It took me probably 12 months after being on the show to finally understand where I am now, you know, I'm a different person in the public eye and yeah, you have to find those tools to deal with it. Absolutely, Anna. and you hit the nail on the head. I totally agree. Cause um, like, as some people know, like, like I was runner up on X Factor in 2012 and that's just a, it's exactly right. Like I grew up in a little place, 130 kilometers west of Dubbo, you know? And yeah. uh, you know, all of a sudden you're known by every second person down the main street of Sydney. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a complete life change and it does, mentally take its toll on you and that sort of gets me to my next question and i was going to you pretty much answered it anyway but um for any potential contestants that you know may want to go on reality television um or may want to go on one of those cooking shows you know master chef whatever it might be um what's the what's the piece of advice that you would give them because it's not just the matter of the uh aspect of being known by everybody um mm -hmm. when you're on a show like this but you can also be perceived differently. The show can make you look like a different person that you're, you're not actually are. And I think, um, like I always say to people, it's, it is a very big life change. Um, yeah. And you've got to buckle up for the ride. Yeah. Because it, it is literally hard mentally to, to cope with that. You know, you cop a lot of criticism. After yeah. You, it's people know who you are. You've got a lack of privacy. You go out somewhere and you get drunk and roll in the gutter and someone takes a photo of you, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? Like just random things like that. Your day-to-day -day life stops. And, and what would you say to someone that wanted to go on another reality show? I think the biggest piece of advice that I could give anyone is that you need to go in there with intentions and with a goal. Because if you go in not knowing where you, you know what you want to do, if if this is the right field or what you know whatnot, you and no one's going to hand something on a silver platter to you at the end of the show. The only way you're going to become a success and and have longevity in the career that you create is by having a vision. It is hard work. It is staying focused. It's doing it for the right reasons, not doing it for fame. You know, you walk out of um, the show and I hit the ground running. I was so determined to build a restaurant. I was so determined to um, get my uh, career going before I did any media. I didn't go to any, um, you know, uh, openings or fashion shows or anything like that. I was like, I do not have time for that. My goal is to open a restaurant. And I had my restaurant open within, you know, I think, eight months after leaving the show, I had built my website. I had, you know, built my, uh, created my steps to uh, creating a career. And I think people need to go into it with uh, an idea in mind of what they want to do, because it is a rocket into the industry and it happens really quickly. And if you don't make the most of that moment after the show, then it will be gone. You know, you'll be known as that person who goes to, you know, openings all the time. And, you know, you need to be a person, you know, if you're a singer or whatever it is, have an idea of what you want to do next. If it is, um, I don't know, uh, having a, a, a residency at a place or whatever it is, set your intentions of what you want to achieve. It might deviate along the way because, you know, things arise, but you need to have a vision and it, you need to stick to it. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. That's just mm -hmm. great. 
advice, absolutely. So recently uh, you appeared in the SBS series, uh, My Restaurant in India, right? So, can, yeah. can, so how this actually works is you've, you've built your own restaurant in India, is that correct? And yes. I, and I recently read something about it, one of them burnt down. Did you have one restaurant in India? Yeah, three I opened and uh, one, so we had this uh, kind of freak accident in the middle of dry season in gold peak season. Um, someone was clearing the land uh, uh, next to us for, you know, just clearing the shrubs and it got out of hand and it fire embers flew over onto our property in three different spots and I, I was actually there. I was, we were having our staff party this day. My son was in the restaurant. My mum, my nephew were having this, you know, beautiful time. And I just left the restaurant and I was driving home to drop, uh, well, to go home. And I get a message from a friend and they're down on the beach and they're like, your roof is on fire. I was like, oh, oh my God, like, what am I going to go into? You know, it's all made from bamboo and wood and, you know, it's a really quite natural uh, structure. And I raced and dropped mum and the kids off home and I turned around, would have been less than 30 minutes. By the time I got back, the entire place was up in flames. And, you know, I had moved to India. I'd, you know, packed up everything that I owned in Australia. I, you know, my son was there with me. We put everything we had into this restaurant and... I was just watching it burn down in, in front of me and our, my staff were like holding me back. No, ma'am, no mammals. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm just running in towards this restaurant and it was gone and it completely burnt to the ground within, um, you know, such a short amount of time. And it was devastating. I was so devastated. I'd spent, you know, so much time uh, building this restaurant and to see all of that just go to the ground in a moment was so heartbreaking. And I felt like I'd lost a limb. It was, you know, it was horrible. And I remember the next day <laughs> within basically uh, less than 24 hours, I, there was articles of support globally, you know, Canada, um, you know, UAE, Australia, everywhere. And everyone was just like, you'll, you'll get through this, you'll um, rebuild, you'll be stronger. And it was, you know, I didn't realize what I had built until it burnt down, which is a crazy thing. You know, you go through your day-to-day -day life and we forget to stop and appreciate the things that we've um, created and the successes that we've had. And I, uh, we weren't sure if financially we could rebuild. We'd had so many losses. We'd lost our, you know, it's a seasonal business. So our main income was just destroyed in the middle of peak season. So we had to find enough money to be able to rebuild. And we built back up and we were open it within four months. It was quicker this time to build because the community supported us. Everyone was all hands on deck. And yeah, now we've been um, running the damn COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had another massive hit, but you know, it's part of uh, the ups and downs of uh, being in a, in an industry of um, running your own businesses. And it's, it does make you stronger and it's, it's, it's very heartbreaking. I think there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes when we're, um, you know, you're in the limelight and people see the glossy side of what we do, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and, and it is, it can be a very tough industry and, but it's very, very rewarding. And there's been a lot of support along the way. And I've been, you know, um, yeah, blessed that the people are enjoying the, the projects and the creations that I'm doing. And, you know, like you, when you create an album and people are supportive, it's such a great feeling. There is a lot of positives that come into that, but it's definitely a very tough um, road. Oh, look, and it's it's a massive credit to you what you've done. It's absolutely amazing everything you've done. It's, it really, really is. And, and I can only imagine okay. how hard that, that really was for you. Um, mm. You know, everything's back on track now, correct? Yeah, it is now. I have to tell you, I think I probably was, um, you know, and I didn't realise at the time, but I probably was depressed for about six yeah. months after yeah, that. I, it, it, emotionally, I was like i i it, it was almost impossible to get out of that like heaviness you know of going through such a loss and you know i think yeah i think we need to give ourselves the time to kind of mourn these situations and and you know like the reality shows that it is such a huge um you know uh, 
thing that we go through that it does take time to kind of understand what's going on and you know we need to deal with these things and it does take time these things do really take a long time no, absolutely absolutely I've got, I've got to ask you a question because a lot of lot of what you do um gets documented you know you have a lot of television companies that, that follow you and mm -hmm. and do things like that and i've got to ask you what it was like to go you know out of australia to another country of course <laughs> and set up you know your business your company and everything like that and restaurants and having cameras follow you every step of the way to <laughs> what you do. And, and do, do you feel a lot of pressure? Do you feel a lot of pressure with that, you know, having, you know, because I guess it's sort of more the fact of, um, you forget they're there after a while, you know, and staff yeah. can be, you know, narky towards each other and different things like that. And of course, it's just business, you know, that's, that's the way it is. But is it, is it difficult to have that? Yeah, it is. You know, I've always been a, a very kind of proud and private person. I've always been someone who generally doesn't talk about um, the difficulties that I go through to create something. I'm normally like, you know, just working away like a crazy person and, and create something and then show you here it is, it's done. And it was really difficult for me to show the learnings that I had along the way. And it was um, in the beginning, I tried to cover it up from, you know, the producers and the cameraman and not show them that I have no idea what I'm doing, you know, like, yeah. in a, and in the end, I was like, okay, what's more important, the, you know, investment and the, you know, my life in this business or a, a television, you know, crew finding it out that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I just can't deal with that anymore. I need to make this a success. And if I have to, you know, fumble and, and make mistakes along the way, that's going to be documented and, and there's nothing that I can do. And the moment this show was released, I actually noticed um, the, the way that people spoke to me changed because it was, you know, instead of just showing a shiny, you know, finished product, they saw the, the, you know, things that I had to go through to get there. And so there is a lot more respect for what uh, I've created. And, and I've realized, you know, there's no um, benefit in hiding the struggles that we go through because it can be, you know, you creating a, an album or someone, um, I don't know, uh, yeah, creating a restaurant, whatever it is. Any, everyone is going through struggles along the way. It's just the way it is. You know, we don't know everything. We need to learn. We need to grow. And it's just part of the process. And my, my um, you know, it. I, I used to just be like in the beginning, in the early days, that um, I used to really be like, this is the way that you have to do it. It has to be done this way. And it has to be perfect. And it's like, you don't, you can't control everything. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if, some things don't work. You don't need to hide it. It's even with my son. He'll go, "Is this right, Mom? Should I do it this way?" I'm, I don't, I don't really mind which way you do it as long as you get to the end, and don't give up. You know, you can make the mistakes, and it's fine. And and I'm gonna let you do that, and I'm not gonna get angry at you if you make a mistake along the way because you've figured out how to get to the end result. Yeah. And I just learned through this process of building the restaurant and having a crew around. I. I'm going to figure this out. I'll get to the end. I'll build a restaurant, but it might be tough along the way. And, you know, you're going to have to just watch. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> Thankfully, it's open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's fantastic. And I've got to ask you, what, what have been some of the most frustrating things um, when you're trying to establish a restaurant in India? Like, what, is there any sort of, a spe the, bleh, listen to me talking, specific <laughs> things that, um, you know, were, were difficult? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything is hard but it, you know I think once you start to uh, realize that you you can work it out it's and one thing that I really uh, go by in day-to-day -day life in the different projects that I do is I just try and be the person receiving uh, whatever it is that you know I'm creating whether it's the diner sitting in my restaurant I go are they do they have any lights, you know, flashing in their eyes? So make sure the lighting is right. Is the music too loud? Can we have a conversation? You know, is when you sit down, is the process of how they bring food to you? Is it, you know, right? Is it smooth? And you just have to put yourself in a diner's position. And I think that just takes time. If you haven't done it before, it takes time. And 
you know, in the early days, there was a lot of issues that we had and it took a good year to iron all of those out. And luckily for me, a restaurant is not like an album where, you know, you, once you put your album out, there's nothing you can do to change what you've created. It's a little bit different, but for a restaurant, you can keep developing along the way and you can make changes and it's a little bit more forgiving, I suppose. And yeah, I think everything was challenging. Like I didn't know how to uh, get cushion covers made for, you know, my couches on the, <laughs> um, you know, how to set up the ordering system of, you know, the getting the produce from locally and, you know, everything was challenging and it's just step by step making your way through. And I think in the early days, I, I did try to really bring in a lot of Australian culture into India in terms of, you know, I brought five Australians over with me and we really tried to change a lot and that doesn't work. You know, you need to realize um, where you are and you need to find a way to work together. Mm -hmm. And that took time to understand the culture in, in India and we'll find a way where we can work together. And so some things stayed, you know, and I, you know, certain things I like to have the way I like them. And then a lot of the stuff we are working together and I've learned a lot and this will happen no matter which country you start a business in, you need to, first thing is understand the culture, understand your environment, understand people's mannerisms, how people work and, and, you know, understanding personalities. Personalities are different because of the, the culture and the way people are raised in India, it's different. And, you know, I can say now that I think I know, um, you know, quite a lot about the culture, but that's seven years later of working in India. So, you know, and hardcore working in India. There's so much in it. Like, I, it, people don't realise just how much is involved in, you know, from like prepping a meal to creating a restaurant to, you know, everything. Like it, you've done so much, it's incredible. And how do you de-stress? What do you do? What do you do to chill out? Oh my God. Um, I don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> Have a glass of wine. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think, I'm blessed to have such a beautiful son. And, and for me, my de-stress is just being really present and spending time with him. You know, he's um, such a beautiful boy and we just like do really normal things like go play soccer at the park. And um, we're really into VR at the moment. So playing a lot of <laughs> VR. Um, yeah, and, and I think um, he's my de-stress, to be honest. And uh, But also, I love to travel. Every moment that I get, I love to experience different cultures and different people. And and for me, that's my, you know, that's my happy place, just experiencing new things. So I do love to travel. But, yeah, not too much, really. I, I know it is quite a fast-paced life that I live, but I guess I've just had to find a way to make, the stressful parts not so stressful <laughs> no good on you and I, like once again i really appreciate you coming on for a chat with us but before we go i'm going to ask you what, what are you up to at the moment you, you're hosting a, a television show at the moment aren't you yeah so farm to fork is currently on air so it's uh, all about highlighting australian produce but making dishes that are a little bit different a little bit fancy but easy for people to recreate at home that don't take a lot of time everyone's busy so, you know, just uh, making life simple. So I think that's been my um, really big goal this last 12 months is to, um, you know, because I'm experiencing it, I've been a lot more at home lately. So, you know, I'm normally jet setting all over and you want to have these beautiful experiences and dinners at home that are easy to achieve. So I um, recently, just in the last month, launched a new cookbook called My Indian Kitchen, where right. it's just a, um, you know, it's a influence of Indian cuisine, but it's just making it quick and simple so that we can have delicious food every day. So that's um, been my goal lately, actually. Great. No, good on you. Well, thanks so much, Sarah. I really appreciate you coming on for a chat. And um, I'm sure everyone's loving sitting back watching our, our watching our chat right now and um it's just fantastic to have a chat to so many different people about you know what's been happening you know how they've been affected by different things and and it, it really is fantastic and we really appreciate you coming on so thank you yeah thank you so much it's been such a pleasure really enjoyed it thank you